Right, this is then the second of the rate of reaction uh, required practicals, right? And it's always called the disappearing cross, right? And I'll explain why that is in a minute. The question that goes along with it is, how does the concentration of sodium thiosulfate affect the rate of a reaction? Okay, now what you have is, and this is a, like a very old but simple kind of diagram, is you've got sodium thiosulfate solution, right, which is the liquid that's in the conical flask. You've got hydrochloric acid that you're then going to have in a measuring cylinder. You're going to have a conical flask, a black paper cross, and a stop clock. Right? So what you can do is you can see there right, is your black cross. And here, it's gone. Okay? And then I'll draw a very nice stop clock to go along with it. And it's called the disappearing cross because what you're actually doing is you're actually looking down the top of the conical flask to see when the cross actually disappears. Now, the method. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the method. Put 10 centimeters, so there's, there's a few practicals here, and what you've got to do is you've just got to basically get the exactly, the, the, exactly the right quantities each time to make the practical work. Put 10 centimeter cubed of sodium thiosulfate in the conical flask. Right? So this here on this table is experiment number one. 10 centimeter cubed of sodium thiosulfate. Put 40 centimeter cubed of water into the same conical flask. All right, so what we've got here now is we've got experiment number one, we've got 10 of thiosulfate and we've got 40 of acid. Put the thiosulfate on the black cross, which is there. Okay, and then what you're doing is you're then you're ready for your experiment to start. Number four is get 10 centimeter cubed of dilute hydrochloric acid. 10 centimeter cubed, put it into a measuring cylinder and you've got 10 centimeter cubed. Then you get that acid and what you do is you pour it into the top of the conical flask and start your stop clock immediately. Give it a swirl just to make sure that it's working. Stop the clock when you can no longer see the cross. So when that cross, that black cross has disappeared, you then stop. What you do then is you write your time in seconds into that box there. Then wash everything out. Wash it all out and then you start again. And this time, this is then when you've got to really, really think about it, is you're going to change the concentration of the sodium thiosulfate. So this time you'll use 20 of sodium thiosulfate and 30 of water. But your volume is still exactly the same each time. Those, experiment number two, goes into the conical flask. Then what you do is you add your acid, 10 centimeter cubed of acid, that doesn't change. Start the stop clock. And then you write your time here. Experiment number three, 30 of thiosulfate, 20 of water. Experiment number four, 40 of thiosulfate, 10 of water. And notice that the acid stays the same every single time. The final one is 50 of thiosulfate, no water at all. So that is then the most concentrated. And what you'll then have is you'll have all your times there. Now remember your variables, don't mess. Measure during the experiment is the time. In class, which is what you're changing between the practicals, is the concentration of the sodium thiosulfate. The control is the temperature of the room, it's the cross that you're using, right? It's the person, and then it's also the amount of acid that then is being used. Now, this is then kind of an example of what you may well get from your results, right? But in this bit, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, what actually happens. Sodium thiosulfate, that's the formula for it, and it's aqueous, which means it's dissolved in water. The hydrochloric acid is also aqueous, which means it's dissolved in water. So both of those, you can't really see them, it just looks like a clear liquid. When they react together, you've then got to look at the state symbols. You will get a little bit of gas given off, which is your sulfur dioxide. Okay, so you might see some bubbles. You'll get sodium chloride made, which just stays dissolved in the water. But the one that makes the difference and actually makes the cross disappear is this, where what you'll do is you'll kind of get that murky kind of precipitate that's in there. And I know it's this because that is a solid. And when it's a solid, what happens is you then can't see through it. It then sort of clouds it all over. 
Now, these are then your results. Now, this column here, all right, what you've got to do is you just got to watch out exactly what they're talking about. In this one, I've got grams per decimeter cubed. You then do three trials. You do one, two, three. The maths of this is you do a mean. Okay, so the mean is add them up and divide by three, and that'll again give you it. Each one of those, you do exactly the same, and then you do a calculation and you make the mean. Now your graph, your graph right at the very end, right, you've again, you've got to look at what they actually give you in the exam. In this one, I've now got moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, so it changes a little bit. And across the bottom here is then the time. All right. And so what you've then got to do is you've just got to think a little bit about what is actually going on. All right. So when it's the most concentrated, it is the shortest amount of time. When it's the least concentrated, it takes the longest. All right. And so that is then kind of like the conclusion for the actual experiment itself. Now, the biggest problem with the entire experiment is the person looking at the cross. Because what you do is you look down the cross, and even when it kind of gets to the more concentrated sodium thiosulfate flakes, you don't quite know when it's disappeared. So it always has to be the same person doing the experiment itself, just to make sure that you get your timing right, so you know when the cross has disappeared. Okay, so that's the biggest problem, right? And then that is the one that kind of solves it, is the fact that it's the same person each time. So that is then the disappearing cross practical, right? And without any shadow of a doubt, the hardest part is deciding when the cross has actually disappeared. And what they're going to do on that one is the maths that's going to be involved is they're going to be asking you to do a mean, right? They might miss out numbers. They might miss out a mean. They might ask you to do whatever, all right? Uh, one of the other things that they're going to ask you to do is they might ask you to draw a graph and explain it. Um, but probably one of the kind of little trick questions in there is they might sort of suggest why does it actually go cloudy? And it goes cloudy because of the sulfur in it, double S, as a solid. And because that sulfur then comes out as like a solid, then what it does, it makes the actual liquid go cloudy itself. All right. So what you need to do is you need to know the method. You need to be able to work out the mean, how to plot the graph, what the issues are with it, and then the reason why it goes cloudy.